everybody, it's your buddy Mog Swamp again, back with another terraforming tutorial. This time I'm starting off on the flat world because today we're going to be making cliffs and I wanted to show you a little bit of what we're going to be aiming for today. So here are some cliffs I've built on my survival super flat world and as you can see it's a totally flat world so I kind of had to do my own terraforming here. And what I wanted to show you guys was sort of the tiered nature of these cliffs. There's multiple levels going up. And also, there's sort of a gradient from darker at the bottom to lighter at the top of the cliffs. And that's something that I think comes out really nice. You can see we're using a whole bunch of different blocks here like basalt, acacia, even some granite and bricks in there. Uh, it's a really great backdrop for your builds. As you can see, uh, this house isn't finished, so so don't pay attention to that part, but other than that, uh, it looks really, really nice to, to have a Minecraft build against a great big cliff backdrop like this. So I've popped back into our little terraforming creative world, and uh, I've laid down a gradient of blocks here, and some of these I don't usually use in my terraforming projects because I don't have great access to them on the super flat world. So for example, this brain coral block, I love using it, but they're just, it's really hard to get for me on the flat world because I have to get it from the wandering trader. And then there's also some new blocks like the tough here, um, the, the cobbled deep splate, <laughs> deep splate. I should actually check to see how easy the tough is to get. Yeah, so I just looked it up on the wiki. Apparently tough just forms naturally underground in little blobs. So if you're playing on a normal world, you should have access to it. I can't get it on the super flat world yet, as far as I can tell. Um, but yeah, so, so this is a nice gradient to use. I think it'll be fun for me to use some of these blocks that I don't normally get to use on the flat world. Basically all I use on my flat world are those blocks there. So you can, you can add or remove some blocks blocks from this list if you want. It's kind of up to your discretion. All right guys, so let's dive right in here. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is sort of lay down a wire frame for our cliff. And I think it would be really nice, I'm picturing like a half moon sort of cliff here. You just start by drawing lines really. So I'd say uh, to start with, we want the cliff to be kind of tiny and maybe have a tier of the cliff here. So maybe we'll go up about five blocks and just sort of lay down a natural looking line here. Um, and again, we're using that same trick we used on the koi pond, which is just making sure that there's no right angles, um, which, which makes things look a little bit more natural. So I think that's a good line to start with. And then I think maybe this would be a good place to have it start going up taller. You're going to want to just like step back a lot. It's kind of abstract when you're laying down your wireframe, but I think maybe it'll drop down a level here. We'll have it curve inward a bit and then sort of just turn into hills here. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So the cliff sort of starts, goes up a little bit, and then it gets steeper here. Sure. And then maybe it, it curves around like this and goes in a little bit. something like that maybe up again one more time let's see something like this so what we're doing is we're creating the different tiers of the cliff and I think that's that's sort of what I was showing you on the flat world how there are different tiers of the cliff it's just a really really cool effect so we'll have this one go super super tall in another tutorial later on in this series I really want to do a waterfall so this will be a great place for it eventually the wandering traders playing around in our pond nice and we'll have this maybe curve back around. And again, this part might be a little hard for you. I am an artist, so uh, using my mind's eye, they call it, uh, to sort of envision how things are gonna come out in 3D is kind of easier for me than I think it might be for some people. So forgive me if this part of the tutorial is a little bit abstract and hard for you to follow. But again, uh, just get different perspectives on it. You can see this is sort of the top-down perspective of how this is gonna look. So if we draw another uh, line down from here, you can sort of see how it's gonna meet up with this second tier of the cliff here. We're gonna have this coming over and meeting that edge of the cliff right about there. Th this feels like a really natural place to start. So I think we've got a really good start here. Once you've laid down a wireframe to start filling in, 
Um, you'd be surprised how fast this will start to come together. So the next step is going to be to sort of start to lay down the very bottom of the cliffs. And this is where we're just going to want to grab the bottom uh, of this palette here and work mostly off these darker colors. So I've cleared out my inventory here and we'll just grab our palette here to draw from. At the bottom, I think it's really cool to have sort of like a spiky effect going on. Oh my god, what is happening here? A, a llama pufferfish war is going on in our little koi pond. <laughs> this is getting very violent. You're distracting me from my tutorial. Oh my gosh! I think the llamas just killed each other for some reason. I'm sorry, but you're just being too distracting. I can't deal with this. All right, so like I said, let's let's start by just placing this darker edge of your palette here, and you can kind of just go randomly with this, I believe. Uh, I really like to favor the, the the basalt at the beginning here, and we're just gonna start filling in some of this uh, bottom edge of the cliff here. And I do like to do some little spikies with the basalt. I think it looks really cool when you sort of like make it look like it's like piles of rocks at the bottom of the cliff here. And notice we're already going to start mixing in some of this acacia wood and the tuff. We don't want this to get too dark at the bottom here. So you can sort of see what we're doing. We're just kind of going along the bottom and uh, placing blocks in a sort of a random fashion. Again, just kind of doing some spikes in here, which I think is going to look really cool transitioning into this pond. And let's start to get some of the lighter colors in here. Great, this is a really, really good place to start. And I'm actually pretty stoked that we're using this deep slate because I think what I want to do is grab the cobbled deep slate stairs and the slabs. And anywhere you have like a really flat wall like this, let's just sprinkle some of these down at the bottom there to sort of mix things up. Yeah, this is looking really cool so far. So it looks a little weird to me to have these piles of rocks just sitting on the grass here. So why don't we go through and replace some of this grass underneath with our cobblestone and a site in stone. And we'll try to sort of fade it into the grass to the best of our ability out from the cliffs. Okay, you can see I've punched out all the grass that I want to replace. So let's just go through and place some of this. Uh, I, I think I'll do stone, andesite, cobble, and tuff. Just sort of randomly in all these holes. All right, yeah, that's looking much better. It's a much cleaner transition into the cliffs there. The last thing I want to do is maybe just sprinkle in a few more of these coarse dirt, rooted dirt, and podzol blocks in between. So let's go ahead and do, do a little bit of that. Sweet, that is looking super, super organic. I love it. So now that we've got that done, I'm just gonna go ahead and build up this first tier of the cliffs a little bit more so that we can sort of see what we're doing a little better. So basically when I'm filling this out, I'm just gonna look up and pay attention to where those lines are gonna come down and meet us. So somewhere right about here is good enough. And we'll just go ahead and fill all of this in. All right, guys, this is what I got now. It should be a lot easier for you to sort of visualize how these three tiers are gonna look now. And we can build up this third one a little more uh, as we move forward with this. Anywhere where these are sort of overlapping like this, where like this second tier is like going straight down to this first tier and sort of covering it up, we can just actually get rid of the dirt because we're gonna have the cliffs here go straight all the way up. So. Yeah, I don't know if that made sense. Hopefully it did, but these are just gonna go right up to the second level here. So the next step is basically just gonna be uh, getting our gradient going a little bit higher. And let me just show you about how tall things should probably go. So something like I just built is about ideal. Your, your acacia should really be dying off by the time you get to this second tier here. And your basalt should really be dying off by the time you get to your first tier. So the other thing I'll mention before we dive into a time lapse is that it's good to start mixing in stairs. So I usually do this afterwards, but it's sometimes helpful to do it while you're actually building this stuff. Basically just build this out like that so that uh, you're not going straight up with a flat wall every single time. There's a bit of sort of variation in how you're doing this. 
So something like this where we're gonna actually have stone start right behind here and continue up. But with that, I think I'm going to transition into a time lapse here because there's really no quick way to do this and I don't want you guys to watch me place every single block. Um, but yeah, let's jump over to the time lapse and hopefully you can still learn a lot from watching how I go about doing that. Alright guys, I think this is looking really amazing so far. I hope the time lapse was helpful in some way for you. Um, I know it's not completely ideal, but you at least got to see, you know, sort of how I go about filling this stuff in. And now we're gonna go through and just grab our three stair blocks, so let me just clear my inventory. I've already done a little bit of this, but we're just gonna go through and sort of add more variance to a lot of this stuff, and we may need to fill in some blocks behind here once in a while. Um, but it's just gonna really help make this look a bit more unique and, uh, and varied. Uh, so wherever you've got like one of these little spikes, you can add a stair block on. And the other added benefit of this is that it's also gonna prevent mobs from spawning. So another thing I like to do is use bricks and granite slabs, and I find that they, they sort of look like dirt from far away, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and we can use those on top of some of these blocks once in a while to sort of make sure, again, that mobs don't spawn, but also just add some variance to this. And I think once you zoom out to this distance, it really just starts to look like the dirt color. And I think it looks really cool, to be honest. All right, and we could also just go ahead and do the same thing with our slabs and just sort of sprinkle in uh, slabs anywhere we missed. It looks like we've got most of these uh, covered up with the granite and the bricks, but in some spots, maybe uh, it just looks better to replace it with stone, maybe where it wouldn't so much make sense to have dirt hanging out. So I like this because it sort of looks like the dirt would have fallen down uh, the cliff a little bit, but maybe like right here, there's there's no other dirt around so we can replace those. Um, maybe this one looks a little bit weird, so let's do a cobble slab there instead. The rest of them I think look pretty good. At the bottom, I think it's nice to just sort of build these up a little bit. Uh, so, you know, just have a few extra blocks down here. Um, just like we did at the very bottom of the cliff and sort of make sure that it's a solid transition uh, or rather a subtle transition into the into the sheer cliff face. So this is looking really, really super beautiful. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is clean up these edges of the cliff because right now they look pretty boring and flat. So the way I like to do that is first by just doing a pass with the dirt and uh, sort of making sure that these edges hang down a little bit, a little bit like that. And this is where I also like to mix in a little bit of soul sand and soul soil. I think that looks really cool, as well as the bricks and the granite, and of course, a little bit of coarse dirt, uh, just, to, just to really mix things up a little bit. Uh, and you can add stair blocks here and there as well. Um, but this is just gonna give you more of a unique transition here. And I think the soul sand and the soul soil actually look really, really cool. 
it might not make sense up close, but once you zoom out a little bit, I think it really helps with these cliff edges. So let's just go through, kind of scatter this stuff around a little bit and see how that comes out. So just to show you again how I kind of go about doing this, let's just go along the bottom here and we can just kind of place our dirt and maybe we have a few spots where it hangs down extra low and we can sort of place it in the corners and you can be pretty random with it and just try and you're trying to go for like an overhanging look really so that it looks like the dirt's sort of hanging off the sides in a lot of places and then once I get that looking okay sometimes I go back through with the soul sand and the soul soil get a few of those blocks scattered in here here and there and then maybe we can do a little bit of gravel a little bit of bricks or sorry not gravel granite <laughs> and a little bit of bricks and uh, yeah, just scatter those in here and there. And one more time together, let's just go along the top ridge here with our dirt. And we're just letting this stuff kind of hang down in a few spots. Maybe you bump it out in a few areas. Uh, you know, just, just sort of try and step back every once in a while and picture the dirt sagging down. And it really helps uh, just envision what you want this to look like here. Yeah, let's have a nice thick hang down there. I think that's looking cool. Yeah, that's that's looking so sick. Um, I think most of the grass is spread now, so this is basically how it'll look. We can go ahead and mix in a little bit more coarse dirt near the edges if we want to, but uh, this, is, this is pretty good for my taste. I think we're looking pretty good. Um, so the next thing is just gonna be adding a little bit of greenery, maybe some vines and leaves hanging down from place to place. And we can sort of bone meal up these little ledges as well. Great, so we can just start by sort of spreading some bone meal around on some of these ledges. We'll get a little bit of flowers, get a little tall grass in here. And I like to just trim a little bit of the grass. It tends to be a little too much. So let's just make sure we're trimming this back, getting rid of some of these flowers. I tend to think too many flowers also looks a little bit bad. This level with a couple bone meal here. That's a nice little flower patch. I guess we'll leave that one. And I'll just kind of be lazy and hit the top here with a few bone meal. Doesn't need to be perfect. We can work on the top in another episode. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, do a pass with our uh, leaves now. So again, I like to use jungle, spruce, and oak. So we're just gonna kind of go around and if you want your build to look nice in the nighttime, I would recommend just sort of going through here and let's see hiding in some shroom lights wherever you can. We get a nice little glowing effect wherever we do that. So let's work on this during the nighttime so we can sort of add some glowing leaves here and there. And another thing we can do is just sort of have some of the leaves hanging down uh, as if they're sort of growing like vines uh, from the bottom of our cliff here. So it's a good way to fill in some of these gaps and uh, you know, you can even add some lights under here if you're clever with it. And you can really just kind of go crazy with these bushes here. You can sort of, you can sort of build the bush up here on the cliff and have it like they're growing downwards off the face of the cliff here. And as you can see, everywhere where I've added these bushes, we just get this really nice touch of light that's sort of lighting up the cliff at nighttime. Wherever you see a dark spot, like right in this corner, you can just come over here dig down we'll make sure that we bury our light nice and deep so that you can't really see it and then we just cover it up with leaves and it's such a great way to hide light into your build all right i think the greenery on these cliffs is looking really amazing now so let's just go and hit it with a couple vines here and there and you don't want to put too many because they really can get overgrown if you're not careful. But the, the nice thing about a cliff like this is there's so many stair blocks and sort of ridges that they tend not to get out of control. And if they do, you can always go through with some string and just sort of block off where you don't want them to grow. You can even put them against some of these leaves so that the leaves actually grow all the way down. Uh, so we might pick one or two of these leaves to do that to. And uh, yeah. I just think uh, the vines are a nice subtle way to add a little bit more greenery to the edge of this cliff here. Now we're really getting on to the, the very finishing touches here. You can scatter some mushrooms in and around this cliff if you want to. I'm gonna leave it alone for now. Um, one last thing I wanna show you guys is this nether brick slab. This might be a little crazy for some of you, but I do think the, the color of the nether brick slab just like adds something to this whole look. 
It's a little bit abstract, uh, so I understand if you don't wanna use this, but I do like to throw it around, especially towards the bottom of the cliff. Uh, this, uh, again, totally optional, totally a matter of preference. I'm kinda getting crazy here with the color theory, but again, it really is about just getting that little dark purple color in here. Uh, and if we turn it back to day, uh, you'll sort of see what I'm talking about maybe a little better. It's, it's just, it really goes well with the green and the grays and it's that little pop of color that uh, is sort of the same way the bricks and the granite are giving us that orangey brown earth tone. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. You can let me know what you think of the nether bricks in the comments, but I think they're really cool. And before we wrap the video, there's one last thing that's just really gonna build, bring this cliff to life. And uh, I'm gonna do a whole other video on custom trees, but I can show you guys one custom tree that you can do to these cliffs to really just make them pop. And they're just little mini spruce trees. So you grab a little oak fence here, just have it going straight up and don't build it too tall. Maybe like right about there is good for this one. Maybe even one block shorter than that. And just start placing your spruce leaves all around it and I wouldn't go too low. You want the trunk to be visible. And you can start by just making this really simple shape here and just sort of surrounding it like that. And then we can go in and just sort of start to build it out a little bit and make it a little bit asymmetrical. And uh, yeah, it's just a really cool way. I, I think that's a done tree right there. It's just a really cool way to bring the build to life even a little bit more. Another thing you can do, I think maybe we could fit a little bit of a bigger one here. So you can actually add little branches sticking off the side here and there, and that really helps as well. So maybe we'll do one like this. And it can help to sort of zigzag the blocks, sort of like this, give it like a little bit of a zipper effect. Um, and yeah, I think that's a pretty good tree right there. So just those two trees alone add so much to this little cliff here. Um, maybe we'll add one more little mini one over here. I try not to do too many. It can start to feel pretty claustrophobic on a little cliff like this pretty quickly. Uh, and who knows, maybe you wanna build something right here, a little fountain or a wishing well or a little cottage. So we wanna leave room for stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just a few of these small trees here and there will really bring this thing to life. So I think that's it for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something about building these cliffs. I'm super happy personally with how it came out. Again, I haven't really had the chance to play with this deep slate or the smooth basalt or uh, the tough or anything like that. And I think mixing it in here and there was a really great effect. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of how this came out. So yeah, if you learned something from this video, make sure to throw a like on there for me. I really appreciate the help. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more of these videos, make sure to subscribe. There's more coming down the pipeline and leave me a comment with what you thought of the whole thing. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Let's turn on shaders and let this video play out.